Hello, this is Nathan from Snap and today we're going to be looking at how to create a company branded survey template along with creating a library of standardised questions which users can then simply drag and drop into a questionnaire. It should take around 20 minutes and as ever there's plenty of further resources available which I'll be pointing to you at the end. We're going to be using SnapXMP, our new seamlessly integrated platform which has got three main components to it. Snap Desktop, which is installed on your PC or laptop. Snap Online, our cloud-based application. And for those of you who might be doing any field-based interviewing, so face-to-face -face interviewing, we also have the Snap Offline Interviewer. Today we're going to be building a branded survey template which can be used to design surveys in both Snap Desktop and Snap Online. And we're going to be creating that template and also the survey pack, so the library of questions, in the desktop software. The creation of surveys and forms in SnapXMP is very much powered by the use of templates, so if you can create your own branded template and survey pack, then you'll be making the process of survey creation that more efficient. For a start, it will save you time by giving your surveys a jump start in terms of company branding, giving your surveys a consistent look and feel. You can ensure the correct terminology is used, avoiding any ambiguity within your question text. And this leads into your analysis, where things like age bandings are the same across different projects, allowing for comparisons to take place. Introductions and privacy statements, including hyperlinks, can be included by default or added to your library. And a really big one, templates allow all users, regardless of their research background, to create professionally designed surveys and forms using the library of predefined questions. So it means that the responsibility of survey creation doesn't need to fall at the feet of just one person. OK, so let's take you into the software. We're going to be working in offline mode and you can see that I have a branded template builder. This template builder is available to download from our website via the templates worksheet, which I'm going to be pointing to you at the end of this session. The first thing I'm going to do is just to quickly clone this template builder, just so I've got the original for future use. And I'll name that as the in-crowd template builder. Essentially this template builder is a survey containing an example of each and every question type along with a placeholder for the logo and if we scroll down to the very bottom you can see there's a thank you message. You'll notice that this is an online message saying to press submit and that's set up for the tablet and the phone and the PC and the laptop edition but if we look at the paper edition you notice that we have a slightly different thank you message. Likewise, if we move up to the top again, you'll notice that we have two different placeholder logos because typically you'd have a higher resolution logo for your paper survey and then a lower resolution for the online survey. So I'll just quickly replace my logos. So I've got a couple of logos on my desktop. And then if I do exactly the same for the online editions, but this time it will be a lower resolution one. Do make use of the alt text, which is an important accessibility feature. Next we'll look at checkboxes, and to do that I will click on question number one, and then we're going to move into style mode to make a change to the actual question style rather than the actual question. I'm actually going to make a change to all the styles, so any changes I now make will also affect the grid questions as well as all the other question styles. And if I head into boxes and images, we can then edit one of the boxes. So I could obviously browse off to a completely different image, but today I'm just going to add some color. So I'll go into more colors and I'm going to select my colors from my company logo. So I'm just going to pop the RGB numbers in there. So I'll just add that one in. And just whilst I'm in this window, I'm also going to add in the darker gray from my logo and we'll make use of that colour later. But for the time being, I'm going to go back to the orange, click OK, and OK again. And I'm going to make all my checkboxes the same, regardless of whether it's a single response or multiple response. Now just bear in mind that's a formatting change, so I will need to make those changes also in the tablet edition and the phone edition, but just to save some time, I'm not going to worry about that today. Next we're going to look at font changes. 
Now the danger here is that if we leave it on all styles, the change I make now will also apply to the titles, the subtitles and the instructions. So instead I'm going to make a change at the individual style level. So I'm just going to change the font to size 16. So that's only affected the single choice question, so I will now need to do the same for the multi-choice question. So it does take a little bit longer because I do need to do each and every question style one at a time. But it just gives you a bit more control to make sure that the changes you make are only affecting the relevant questions. For the question numbers, I am going to do that for all styles because your titles and subtitles don't tend to have question numbers anyway. And on that note, we would normally recommend that once your survey is ready to go live, you do remove the question numbers completely. But they certainly are useful when you're designing and testing your survey. And you can see if I move into my tablet edition and the phone edition, we've actually removed them by default anyway. And again, just remembering that those font changes would also need to be made on all the other editions as well, including your paper edition. Now, occasionally when you're doing this, you may come across a like style. So just bear with me one moment. And this basically means that the change you made was made to the actual question rather than the question style. So basically it means that the change was made in normal design mode rather than style mode. It's an easy fix though. If I go into style mode and then across to the style organizer, I can either go into properties and actually create a brand new style, so perhaps naming it single choice italics, or I could go into reassign and reassign that new styling as the new default single choice. But today I'm actually just going to undo those changes anyway. I'll quickly save and then we'll head into questioner properties. Within here there's various settings including what will happen when your respondents press submit so you may wish to send them back to your home page or better still if you were to potentially create a thank you page you could actually send them back there instead. Today though I'm going to leave it on default which will just take you back to our standard thank you page. If we come down to buttons so these are the navigational buttons which will appear at the bottom of each page. So if I go into design, we can then make use of my company colors. So again, I'll go into color and more colors. And this time I'm going to make use of the darker gray for my logo. And click OK. What I am going to do though is go into the individual submit button and choose a slightly different color for just for the submit button. The idea being that hopefully that will encourage people to actually press submit at the end just because it's standing out. There are lots of other useful sections to consider but again just to save some time I'll leave it at that. Remember though some of these options particularly the colours of the buttons etc they are formatting changes so again I will need to make those same changes in the tablet and the phone edition. Okay so let's save what I've done. And then at this stage, I'm going to close down the survey and I'm actually going to make another clone of this one just so we've always got this to fall back on if we need to make any future updates. And this time I will name that as in crowd survey template. I'm going to add some placeholder text for my title and subtitle. And I'll do the same for question number one. And then it's a case of removing anything which we don't want to be in the template. So I'm going to remove the instruction. And I'm actually going to remove pretty much the rest of the survey, to be honest. And I'll leave my thank you messages at the bottom. So in my case today, I've left the thank you message placeholder text for the title, subtitle and the very first question and of course my logo at the top. 
do be sure to check that you're happy that the paper survey looks as it should do. Obviously you may wish to add some more specific questions and introductions to your template including hyperlinks off to your privacy statements etc and you can do that by making use of the insert button and HTML field and there's more information on our support hub about that. But today we'll leave it as it is so I will save that with the blue tick and then we're just going to do a quick preview and just notice that I'm doing this on the PC edition just so that every time we create a new survey using this template the default edition will be the PC one. Okay, let's have a quick look at the preview. So you can see that my company colors have been included in my navigational buttons. Exactly the same with the checkboxes. So we'll close that down for the time being. And then it's simply a case of closing down the survey. So survey overview. And then we're just gonna convert this to a template. So file and save as template. And just remove the number one at the end and click okay. Next we're going to look at taking it a step further and create a survey pack. Now a survey pack contains a template but also potentially contains predefined questions that are available to drag and drop into a survey. So if I go up to the reference window, Snap Desktop defaults to the reference survey pack which contains a number of predefined questions, age and gender, etc. As well as down the bottom we have the templates which are supplied by SnapXMP. But we also provide you with the user survey pack and it's this user pack which we're going to be editing today. And if we head straight into edit mode you can see we've given you a couple of predefined folders frequently asked questions and privacy statements but you can create some additional folders should you wish and there's also a folder which is where we'll be putting our template. And it's simply a case of right clicking and importing the template we just created. So there's the template. We have the option of adding some details, which is particularly useful if you've got a number of these templates. And I can add a preview image again, just to make it easier to work out which of these templates this is. And when I click OK, it will remove anything which is personal to me. And if I click OK again, my template's all set. So now that my template's been added to my survey pack, it's probably worth checking just to make sure it's doing what it should be. So if we create a brand new survey, you can see we have the default templates provided by SnapXMP, but if we drop down the menu, I also have my own user templates. I've got a number of different ones for different projects that I work with, and you can see they're all doing slightly different things. So some have got privacy statements in, others have got standardized demographic questions in. But if I move down, can see I've also got my in crowd template so I just double click on that to create a, a new survey just give it a name of test of template you can see it's pulled everything in that it should be I'm just going to add one additional question just to make this a bit more realistic and I'll make that a grid question And again, just to make this a little bit more realistic, I'm just going to pop a page break into the questionnaire. And then if we do a quick preview. So if we bring the preview up, as we can see, again, it's bringing in my company logo, including my hover text. It's using the correct company colors for the checkboxes and the navigational buttons. And as you can see, my submit button is also the correct color. But if we close that down and move back to our survey pack, as mentioned, we do give you two folders, the frequently asked questions and the privacy statements. Plus, as I said, you can also create your own ones. 
And if I move into an existing survey, so again, I'll just close down my test survey. So I've got a questionnaire containing some of my previously frequently asked questions. So this could be just a survey from last year, or it could just be one that you've just made up. So if we open up the survey, You can see it contains a number of standardized questions which I've previously used and then down the bottom we have a number of different statements including some sort of privacy statements there. And it's simply a case of taking some of these existing questions, so I'll highlight the first couple of questions, and then I'm just going to drag them back into my survey pack. Just make this a bit bigger so you can see it. And then if I do exactly the same for my privacy statements down the bottom. I've got three different ones, but again, I'm just going to drag them into my privacy statements. And the next time I'm creating a brand new survey, not only will we be starting with a branded template, which will of course bring in your company logos and colours, etc., but we've also got access to all these frequently asked questions. And then it's simply a case of taking those questions and dragging them in into an existing survey. One thing just to bear in mind, this survey pack which we've just created is stored on my actual C drive, so my local computer. So if I do want to give colleagues and clients access to this survey pack and the, the templates contained within it, then we will need to make sure we give them this user survey pack. So if I just go into the folder where that survey pack's stored, so it's the Snap Desktop folder just on your C drive, it's simply a case of copying that file emailing off to a colleague and telling that colleague to pop it in exactly the same location but obviously on their computer. One thing you might wish to do just before you do send it to them is if I go back into edit mode we have the option to password protect this survey pack so that means that your colleagues can access it but you keep ultimate control of it. So that's my template and survey pack all set up for Snap Desktop. You can also make your template available to use for creating new surveys in Snap Online. To make it available, we simply need to clone our template as an online template. So there's a template we created earlier. I said we're in offline mode at the moment, so if I clone that, that I said this time we will clone it as an online template. You can see it's logging into my online account. I've already got a folder called My Templates, so I guess it makes sense to create it in there. Click OK. And again, you can see it's synchronizing that template with my online account. If I then go and log into my online account, you can see I have my templates folder, which I showed you a moment ago. And as you can see, the template has been synchronized to the online account. I'm going into that template. As before, we can add a thumbnail just to make sure that it's obvious which template this is. So again, I'm just going to choose. I have also got the option to share this template with a colleague. So if I go into shares, now you can see this folder has actually already been shared with my colleague Bill, but I could also add an additional user. And you can see it's all based on an email address, so I'd set potentially someone up to be a researcher, which means that when they create a new survey, they will also have access to this template. But I will cancel out of that today. And if I go back to my main sort of your work folder and go and create a brand new survey, you can see I've got access to the templates which are provided by Snap Online, but we also have my own user templates. So again, I have a number of different ones in here today. But I've also got the in crowd template. Okay, so hopefully that's provided you with the steps required to build your own company branded template. And you can also now see those benefits that come along with having one, as well as having that library of standardized questions. As mentioned previously, there is a how-to tutorial on our support hub, which includes the branded template builder, which I was using earlier, so you can download that. And of course, remember that we are always on the end of the phone or email. So whether that's accessing our help desk or perhaps booking onto one of our training courses, or if you are short of resources or just like a helping hand, then our research department can assist you with any aspect of your projects from simple data entry jobs right through to complete project management. Okay, thank you very much for joining us today and we'll hopefully see you again soon.